Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, and welcome to a Jada in Stitches live stream show. Mr. In Stitches and I are both in the house today. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy January. We're halfway through. Today is the midpoint of January, everybody. We are already halfway through this month, and I would just like to pat us all on the back for getting this far so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got a nice hot coffee, and we are ready to go. All right. I'm sure you can see this lovely baby blanket in front of me here. This is our cross back baby blanket. I love this pattern. Um, we designed this to go with a pair of booties that we'd made years ago. And I'm going to remake the booties today to match this blanket because it's a nice quick little project. I love making baby booties and the spring is closer than you think. So if you've the, the you're the type that has maybe some new babies arriving in the family. I know some of you've got some new grandbabies on the way. Um, this is just a really cute, simple little pair of booties. They're really nice for newborns or preemies. I'm gonna have both sizes for you today. And um, they're, just, they're just really cute. They've got this real vintage, old fashioned look, as you can tell kind of from uh, the photo that Mr. and Stitches has up, uh, or just the blanket that I've got in front of me. So we're gonna use this, this really nice sort of cross back look. And um, I'm not gonna be adding the ribbon today. You can add ribbon if you want, but I'm also gonna show you how to just make a quick little pair of drawstrings that you can attach to the booty so that you can, you know, turn them into a cute little bow, but also don't worry about them um, wanting to come out. Uh, so we're gonna do that today too. Um, we have links to the original tutorials for both the baby booties and the blanket available in the description box. So if you want to pop back there at some point and just sort of catch the tutorials in a more concise manner, uh, either the blanket or the booties, we're just going to work on the booties today, um, then we've got that available for you. It's linked down below. And we do have written patterns for both of these, their booties and the baby blanket, if you're interested in either of them. They are available in our Etsy shop and they are today's sneaky sale. We put both of them on sale. Uh, so that's what we're up to today. I want to start by thanking Nico, our gifting ninja, for gifting a membership. And congratulations to Melissa, who won it. And we've already got a, <laughs> a membership milestone from Jessica Rabbit, who's been a member for 25 months. Hello, Jessica. And Ms. Rabbit says, good morning. I had to pull myself away from my button stash so that I could pay attention to the stream. Oh, I know how that feels. <laughs> and thank you. Oh my gosh, I just missed that. Thank you to, hang on, let me just quickly open that up. I hope this doesn't mess things up here. Uh, thank you to Tammy, Tammy for picking up the pattern in our Etsy shop. Thank you so much, Tammy. Okay, let's get to it. We are all ready to go, we're all in the house and I'm just going to uh, go through what we need today. So this is a size three lightweight or DK or sport weight or baby weight. Those are all the names <laughs> for the size three yarn that we need for this project. So size three, lightweight or DK, sport weight, baby weight, that's the yarn weight. Uh, you don't need very much. You maybe need 30 yards for the entire pair. Thank you so much, Annette, for picking up a pattern. Uh, so you don't need very much yarn. And of course, uh, you'll need quite a bit of it for the baby blanket. So if you finish the baby blanket and you want to make a little something to go with it, then this is a nice little addition to go with the blanket, these little booties. Uh, Kimberly in the house, member for 21 months with a membership milestone. Thank you, Kimberly. Kimberly says, good morning, Jada and Mr. And everyone. I second that. Good morning, everybody. So in addition to your size three DK weight yarn, you're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're using... Uh, I'm using a G, a G6 or a four millimeter hook today. Now I'm going to make a pair of booties for uh, a newborn. This will fit a newborn up to about three months using the G or the four millimeter or 4.25 millimeter. They're kind of the same thing. That is the hook size for a newborn to three month sizing. If you want to make them for a preemie, you want to use a three millimeter hook. That's also known as a D or a three. So a G hook for newborn to size three months, a D hook for the preemies. And that's not, um, that's the only difference you have to make. The pattern is pretty much the same for both. You're just downsizing or upsizing your hook depending on the size you're gonna make. Uh, you'll probably use slightly less yarn for the preemie, but it's a negligible amount. 
Um, so that's it. Once you've got all that together, we can get going. Like I said, you can use ribbons if you want, uh, but I'm going to show you how to make sort of built-in ties today, just so you can um, make those booties unlikely to be kicked off. Once the babies get to be two, three months, then they start kicking those little legs out like crazy. Booties can go flying. Karen, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Um, so being able to just sort of gently tie them on so they don't want to go anywhere can be very helpful. So I'm just going to put my little blanket off to the side here. And I'm going to put my scissors and my knitting, my little needle off to the side. And I'm going to get my yarn ready to go. Okay, I'm going to make the whole pair today. Uh, this is such a quick little pattern that you can make one pair in, I'm going to guess, basically the length of time we live stream, which will be roughly an hour. Um, and it's, uh, I think there's only about seven rows per booty, so it's nice and quick. I hope everybody's nice and cozy. And um, I'll also tell you about some gauge. So we're gonna get started. And um, at the end of row two is when we're gonna check our gauge. So I will get to us, get to the gauge when we get to the end of row two. So here we go. Whether you're making them for a preemie or a newborn, we all start with the same chains. We're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook and we're gonna chain 39 to begin. Um, Sylvia asks, what yarn is the blanket? I think it's, um, is it ice cream by Lion Brand? Yes, um, these are two different ice creams by Lion Brand. I think one of them is, ooh, blueberry ice cream. The other it one's... says um, in the tutorial, it'll say exactly what the yarn is. Yes, it'll say in the bank blanket tutorial, I've given the names, but this is definitely Ice Cream I'm Big I'm pretty Scoop. sure it's Ice Cream by Lion Brand. Ice Cream Big But Scoop. it might be two Yep, two there's two different, different ones. Balls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're both, it's two, two Ice Cream Big Scoops, and they were two different colors. Um which is how we got this really pretty kind of alternating look to it. And the, the Ice Cream Big Scoop, if you've never used it, this is some Ice Cream Big Scoop right here. It's a very gentle, self-striping yarn. Um, I love this yarn. <laughs> uh, and it's a nice, it's an, it's an acrylic yarn. It's very, um, it's very smooth. It's not too fluffy. It doesn't want to pill uh, terribly. And for the amount of time that a baby will be wearing these booties, the booties will still continue to look nice, even if they're tossed into the washing machine, so. We had a super, a super, which was a member, Milestone from Tori. Hi, Tori. Tori's been a member for 40 months. Thank you, Tori. Tori says, miss seeing you guys do a live stream together. Aw, well, we're still working on being able to squeeze ourselves into the same room. <laughs> <laughs> but we know, are I'm both here. Liking, I'm kind of liking this being uh, being in the other room from mm -hmm. you. There's a lot more space out here. I can kick my legs and elbows out. It's fantastic. That's 39 chains. Okay, I just double counted. I always like to double check to make sure I've got the right chain number. So 39 chains, both booties are made identical. There is no left or right. So you can make, once you make one, you make the other one exactly the same. So that's 39 chains to begin. Row one, you skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet into the next chain, and you're gonna single crochet in each chain all the way back to the beginning. So you have 38 single crochet stitches. I see you, Nico. Holy cow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Nico, the gifting ninja, has just swooped in and gifted 20 memberships. Holy cow. Thank you what? so much. Oh my goodness. Let's just run through who's won here. Welcome and congratulations to Bernadette, Miss Jersey, uh, Mandy, Martha, Linda, Alma, Shannon, Regina, We've got Tracy, Debbie, Nicolette, uh, Storm Chasing Ninja, that's appropriate. <laughs> Kelly, Ginny, Yvonne, Cecilia, Pauline, Jan, and Marie. Oh, and Curated Life, both, all of you. Congratulations and welcome back. Thank you so much, Nico, holy smokes. And we've got a membership milestone from Leslie. Hi, Leslie. Leslie's been a member for 37 months. Leslie says hello from snowy Washington, DC. 
How about sizing up? My family has a long history of big babies, 10 pounds or more. Wowzers. My daughter was a bit over 12. Holy cow. <laughs> um, you can size up to a uh, five millimeter hook and a regular size four medium weight yarn. So a nice size four medium weight acrylic yarn and a five millimeter hook for even bigger feet a five and a half millimeter hook with that size four medium weight yarn. And that will definitely size it up for you. Um, I think we may have missed a milestone from Diane. From Diane? Did we? Hang yes, on. we did. So a... Diane says, love you, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. Diane's been a member for 33 months. Thank, Thank you, you, Diane. And it looks like we got one from... Did we get Leslie's? I got Leslie. And I didn't see Vima. Diane. Oh, sorry, Diane. Yes. Thank you very much, Diane. The, the chat kind of went rather quickly it there went for quickly a minute. With Nico's big gift there. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a milestone from Vima and Alia. Vima and Alia. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I see that I have to move my chat. One moment, please. Come on, Jada. You need two extra arms. I need two extra arms. Vima! Vima's been a member for 39 months. Happy New Year, Vima. Vima says, hi, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. Love the blanket colors. It's beautiful. I just love, love whatever you make and love your voice. So soothing for my heart. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that because, you know, when you hear your own voice on recording and you kind of go, oh my gosh, is that what I sound like? I'm glad to hear that I'm not, I'm not making anybody's ears bleed. So thank you very much. And Alia, Alia has been a member for 50 months. Thank you, Alia. Alia says, thank you for all y'all do. Happy New Year. Excited for this ninth year of calendar blankets. Oh, we are too. And Ooh, we will, it's coming we will this launch Friday. that this We're Friday. This Friday. Very excited. Hi, Emily. Emily's been a member for 56 months. Emily with a little uh, membership milestone, just sort of poking her nose in to say hi. Hi there. Ronald and Kathy Jones. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Super chat. A super chat. A super, Thank you. super chat. Thank you so much. We're, we're, uh, we're pulling out the uh, the big ship for... The, the, the big ship the for big Ronald ship. and Kathy. And uh, happy new year to my cousins, Ronald and Kathy. They say, good morning, dear cousins. It's cold today, but you warm up any day. With lots of love from Kathy and Ron. Thank you both. It is cold today. So I hope we are all in a nice, cozy stay-in and do some crochet kind of mood. I know I am. We also got a super chat from Maureen. Big thank you to Maureen for Thank you so dollars. much. That's Maureen's first super chat here right. on the lives. Thank you so much, Maureen. And, yeah, oh my gosh, gives, it's still YouTube going. YouTube gives out little stickers now. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and also Mickey. Mickey! Um, membership milestone from Mickey. Mickey's been a member for 36 months. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey says, how would you size for a newborn baby that's on the small size. Well, um, a three, a newborn to three months is is uh, pretty regular. I would say what I'm doing right now that would fit um, the newborn. That's the size three medium, or I should say the size three DK weight yarn and the G6. But if you think the baby's going to be smaller, like a preemie, then you want to use a D three hook also known as a three millimeter hook and you can use the baby weight yarn um that's what i would say fits a preemie but it'll it'll fit a smaller foot um and babies do grow remember so um it's always better to err on the larger side um because when they're really 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 little you know they 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 just you don't really need to have them in fancy booties but once they get a little bit bigger then the, the booties <laughs> the booties can come out um hello virginia virginia's joined our alpaca family All right. thank you virginia i think virginia might be a re, a re virginia's a re-welcome a re-welcome all right we are caught up thank you everybody here we go at the end of row one no matter which booty you're on you should have 38 stitches so if uh you're making it for i'm just going to say it again if you're making it for preemie size three dk weight yarn and a three millimeter hook a newborn to three months a four millimeter hook, 4.25 millimeter, a G6 hook, same yarn. For bigger babies or a slightly larger foot, you can upsize your yarn to the medium size four weight, acrylic, cotton, whatever you like. And a five millimeter hook, also known as an H or an eight. Um, and for even larger, same size four medium weight yarn and a five and a half millimeter hook, also known as an I or a nine. And like I said, err on the side of large because baby's feet do grow. For row two, we are gonna chain three and turn and we're going to start this cross back stitch now. So chain three, turn. Now we're skipping, we're starting to use double crochets. So 
this chain three does count as a double crochet and we are not using the first stitch. So because the chain three counts as a double crochet, that first stitch there is being used by that chain three. So ignore this. We are gonna skip the next stitch and we are gonna double crochet into the next three stitches. So I'm gonna double crochet into each of these three stitches and then I'm gonna explain what I just did one more time. Okay, so here we go. We chain three and turn. That chain three counts as a double crochet, so it's technically using that first stitch. Then we skip the next stitch and we double crochet into each of the next three stitches and here's the cross back. We are gonna double crochet into that first skipped stitch. So not this stitch, because it's being used by the chain three, the actual <coughs> skipped stitch. We're gonna double crochet by reaching back into that skipped stitch and don't, don't crochet too, too tightly. You're gonna pick up your yarn as usual. So you've got your three loops on your hook but you wanna like bring your hook up so that it's, it's level with the top of your regular double crochets and then double crochet as normal. And that's how you get that marvelous cross back look. So you have three double crochets and then one that crosses back over top of it. Don't worry, we're gonna do a whole row of these. I can hear you giggling, mister. Um, Jessica Rabbit might have done some research for us. Mm -hmm. um, the colors are mint and birthday cake. Does that sound familiar? Yes, to you? mint and birthday yeah, cake. Those are the Lion brand ice cream used for the blanket. This is birthday cake, this delicious pink and white. And this is mint, the obvious minty colors. Thank you, Ms. Rabbit. Yes, birthday cake and mint. And I striped them throughout this entire blanket. Um, oh my gosh, I mean this pink. This pink, oh. Okay, let's do that again. We have just created our first cross back, so here we go. This is where our last stitch was worked. If you pull your work up, you can see the little double crochet was worked there. So you wanna skip the next stitch. You're looking in sets of four. We're working sets of four all the way along. So you skip the first stitch, that's the set of four. This is the first unworked stitch after your last double crochet. Skip that stitch and double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And like I said, we have a tutorial for this. So if you need a refresher, you wanna see it a little quicker, uh, we've got that for you. And it's linked in the description box down below. Then you can really see that skipped stitch you're going to double crochet into it. So you start your double crochet, you reach back, slip your hook right through it, making sure you get out to the other side, pick up a loop, and you draw up that loop on your hook so that it is level with your double crochets, so the height of your work, and then you double crochet as normal. I find it helps to kind of keep my thumb on it. There we go. And there's your cross back. Such a neat look. <coughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> There's the last worked double crochet. You can see if I pull on it, it's kind of yanking on that stitch. So this is the first stitch of the next four. I skip that one. Double crochet into the next three. After Gifted double membership. Lucy! Thank you so much, Lucy. Lucy, also a gifting ninja, has zipped in, gifted a membership, and Penelope has won it. Congratulations, Penelope. Thank you, Lucy. After your three double crochet, you find that skipped stitch and double crochet into it. Once you get used to it, it's really not that tricky. <clears throat> it just looks tricky. I have a question for you. Sure. Are you using the Big Scoop uh, mint right now for mm -hmm. the boots? Yes. What are you, a genius? This is the mint. I told you I wanted to match it to the blanket. I didn't know you were a, a crochet genius. <laughs> Very funny. Ha 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 ha. Yes. We have a super chat. Tori! Hi, Tori! Tori has popped in with a super chat. Thank you, Tori. Tori says, love the craft room cleaning videos. And when the mister has his special eggnog, can't wait for a new calendar. <laughs> I love the special eggnog. <laughs> Yes, new calendar blanket launches this Friday, everybody. Um, and I'm not gonna say anything about it. I'm not giving any spoilers. 
Uh, but I will say, if you missed the Friday video, we did talk a little bit about what you need for it. That's only if you want to be I able have to... A, I have a hint. I'd like to give Oh, you want to give a hint? hint? Sure. Two hints. I'm being generous this year. Two mm -hmm. hints. One, you're going to need a crochet hook. <laughs> and two, you're going to need yarn. <laughs> so that's it. Those are the hints you get. I have to live with this trolling, guys. Just so you know, you only get an hour of it every week. I have to live with it. I guess this isn't a troll-free zone. This isn't a troll-free no, zone. No, I thought it was. Oh, someone asked earlier, would would this pattern be would would you consider this pattern okay for a boy? Heck yeah, uh, a little baby boy. Heck but, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, just choose the color. It doesn't matter if they're kind of frilly looking. Um, These aren't just, really. <clears throat> just choose a color. This isn't what I would call lacy. Like super frilly. No, like this is the stitch pattern right here. Yeah. So you can sort of see. I'm gonna hold so it right absolutely. here. Absolutely, boy, girl, chipmunk. This alien, is <laughs> whatever. It's a fancier stitch, but it's not what I would consider terribly gendered. It's not really f super feminine. It's not really super masculine. And to be perfectly honest, babies are just kind of like freaking adorable. So. <laughs> So they deserve freaking adorable clothing. <laughs> um, so yeah, just make it whatever color you want. You know, I I like um, I like you know nice rich dark blue for a boy uh, or a baby blue if you want to go a little more traditional. Um, green, yellow if you don't know what the baby's gonna be. Uh, purple, pink, bright red if you're super patriotic. Red, white, and blue you yeah, could stripe whatever. them. Mix yeah, whatever. Mix the colors up. Lorraine! Um, I have, okay, before you get to, we got some stuff that popped up here, but one was a good question about, mm -hmm. um, oh boy, I lost you. Okay, well, while that. you're looking for it, I just want to say hey to Lorraine. Lorraine with the membership milestone. She's been a member for 37 months. Thank you, Lorraine. Lorraine says, morning, Jade and Mr. And Stitches. Happier New Year for you both. It's 3.21 a.m. here. Oh my gosh. Lorraine, who has insomnia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We also had a um, a new member join, Teresa. Big welcome to Teresa for joining Alpaca Level. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you for joining the family. Um, so I found it. It was a question from Regina. Mm -hmm. um, does the pattern in the shop include adult sizes for these baby slippers? Oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, no, the pattern in the Etsy shop is just for babies and it's just for baby sizes. Uh, but I do like the idea of creating an adult pair. Yeah, why not? It we might do have, have to have be adult slippers. It would have to be changed a little bit um, because these slippers are designed with a seam around the bottom because the babies don't stand. So um, having a seam across the bottom of the foot isn't a big deal. Um, but uh, for adults, uh, those or children, those of us who stand, we don't want to have a seam running underneath our feet because it just feels a little funny. Um, so I would have to uh, definitely change how we build these slippers to suit somebody who can stand. Uh, but I love that idea. Thank you. So I'm just working that little cross back stitch all the way across my original row of 38 single crochet stitches. Oops, I don't want to do four. Three double crochet, cross back and double crochet into the skipped stitch. So you're working little sets of four all the way across. And I'm just approaching my last set of four. So I skip the next stitch, double crochet into the three stitches after that. Hi, Louise. Louise with a membership milestone. Louise has been a member for 61 months. Thank you, Louise. Louise says, just finished the 2022 calendar. Can't wait for this year's awesome. Oh, I'm looking forward to Friday. Let me tell you. All right. So that's my last set of cross back stitches. And then I'm just going to double crochet into the last stitch. So the, each row begins with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and each row ends with a double crochet. So consider it having like a post on either end of your cross back stitch. So you should have uh, nine cross back sets of stitches all the way across. So you can easily count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
A chain three and a double crochet to start and finish the row, nine cross back stitches in the middle. So they look like little haystacks and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for nine of them all the way across. Doesn't matter what size of booty you're doing. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee here. And now we're going to continue this cross back stitch for the next few rows. So we're going to chain three. Chain three counts as a double crochet. We're going to turn and now it's a little easier because now you want to make sure you're you're stacking your haystacks, so to speak, directly on top of the ones from the previous row. So remember, chain three counts as a double crochet. So this little stitch right here, already used, that means this is the first stitch of the set of four. One, two, three, four. This is the stitch you skip to begin with, and you double crochet into each of the next three. And every second row, <clears throat> excuse me, every row that you turn, your little haystacks are going to look like they're leaning in the other direction. So it's, it's really cute. So there's my three double crochet. And now I reach back and I double crochet into that first skipped stitch. And now you can see that because I'm going back the other way, the haystacks are all going to be leaning in the different in the other direction. So they are they're, every other row they're going to look like this. So they kind of cross one way and then the other. And then it's the same thing all the way across. Skip the first stitch. So it's easy to see those four stitches now. One, two, three, four. Skip the first one, double crochet into each of the next three, and then cross back and double crochet into the first skipped stitch. And this is this is the pattern throughout. It is much easier from here on out because you can really see those little haystacks. If I get going too quickly, I drop my drop my stitches. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to do so rows three and four. Um, so this is row three that we're on, and it's a full nine um, haystack <laughs> or nine crossback sort of motifs all the way across. And so is row four. So row two, three, and four are all identical. And we'll have nine little cross back stitches uh, in each Re Regi row. Regina would like to know, how did they stay the same direction on the blanket? On the blanket, we single crochet in between each set of cross back stitches. So uh, every other row is, is single crochet and the rows in between are the cross back stitch. And that's so that we have them all going in the same direction. And that also helps to minimize sort of like uh, having a blanket that's a little too holy, I guess, like too many spaces. Um, this is a nice little sized space for a baby blanket. And I kind of liked the idea of everything leaning in one direction. So whether you're looking at it, uh, if, if depending on which side you're looking at, they're either all leaning to the right or all, all leaning to the left. Um, but with the, the little feet, <laughs> I really wanted to highlight that fun cross back stitch pattern and it looks neat going one way and then the other one way and then the other. So um, that's the only difference between the two. We're really, we're really having fun with the cross back stitch. Um, it makes the, the, the little booties a faster build using that double crochet cross back stitch throughout and um, the baby blanket's just a little fancier. We have a member milestone from Lucy. Hey, Lucy, Lucy, who's been a member for 10 months. Lucy, who's extremely, <laughs> extremely uh, supportive with the gifting, also <laughs> says, I made the blanket and the booties as a baby gift for a colleague. Her husband cried, aw, she owns horses and I thought haystacks were perfect. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, that works out so nicely. Aw, I love it. I love, I love to, I, I love it. I mean, who doesn't? You make something for someone and they really, when they really, really, really like it, it just warms your heart to no end. That's wonderful. Yes, that's so sweet. Once you get comfortable with that little um, cross back stitch, so skip a stitch, work three double crochet, and then cross back and double crochet into the skip stitch, you get a lot quicker your um, tension e eases out too, so you you don't you have too much trouble kind of pulling up on that extra little loop. Um, it's like anything. The first few stitches of any kind of pattern, you might find yourself going, "What am I doing? What is happening here?" And then once you work a few more 
rows of it, you start to sort of see, you see your own tension kind of evening out. It's, it's kind of magical. I love it. Working on my last set here. Skip one, double crochet into the next three. Cross back and double crochet into that skipped stitch and double crochet into the last stitch, which will be the top of the chain three from the previous row. So double crochet into the top of the chain three. That's your last stitch. And there are rows one, two, and three complete. And now you can see that Hi Debbie, thank you. <laughs> thank you for picking up a couple of patterns. You can see that cross back stitch now worked first one way and then the other, and it looks so neat. So all of those little haystacks sit directly on top of each other. And then we are going to now chain three and turn and repeat this again. So we're gonna have this, this next row, all of the, the little crosses are gonna go the same way that they did in row two. Just a quick uh, reminder, uh... Some people are saying, Jada, you're going too fast. Um, right now we're live, so Jada's gonna kind of rip through it a little bit, but we do have detailed step-by-step -step tutorials for both of these projects yep. Yep. on our channel. And we're gonna link those, are, are they already linked? They're already linked, yeah. So okay. um, if you need to see the, uh, the, the baby booty or the blanket tutorial, um, a little more concisely, a little closer to the lens, and of course moving a little slower, or you can kind of pause it and, and you know crochet at your own speed. We've already got tutorials for both of them. Um, so today we're just, I'm just sort of making a pair of booties to match this blanket, and uh, those are already done for you. So if you need to sort of check back, we've got those linked down below, and they will stay there. So if you kind of come back to this a little later on today, and uh, um, you know you're looking for that link, it'll be there for you. Plus, we'll create a post in the in the community post a little later. Chain three, turn, and row five or row four, I should say, is the same as row two and row three. So you chain three, turn, skip the first stitch of the set of four, double crochet into each of the next three and then double crochet into the skipped stitch. So we're continuing this little cross back stitch. It's all double crochets. It's just that you're changing where you put a double crochet for, to get that kind of cross back look. We have another gifted membership uh, from Nico, the gifting ninja fairy. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership and Kim has won it. Congratulations, Kim. And I just want to catch Shari. Shari also had a membership milestone here. Hi, Shari. Shari's been a member for 23 months and she says, I made it. <laughs> Glad you made it. All right. Again, you're looking at those little stacks. Each stack is four stitches, skip the first one, double crochet into each of the next three, and then cross back and double crochet into the skipped stitch. So nice and simple. Like I say, once you kind of get into the rhythm of it, you can get quite comfortable and it starts to move faster and faster. And now you can see that the uh, cross back for my third row of the cross back stitch, this is row four of the booty, are now going in the same direction as the first set of them, or which was row two. Um, and so if you kind of keep, if you continue adding rows of the cross back stitch, it's always going to do this on you. And if you interrupt the rows of cross back stitch with a row of single crochet or half or double or whatever, um, I recommend the single crochet because it, it keeps those those cross back rows closer together. Then all of your cross backs are going to go in the same direction. So I'm kind of neat. We have a milestone from Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Joyce has been a member for two months. Thank you, Joyce. Joyce says, I have been watching you for at least two years and finally became a member two months ago. Yay. Why did I even wait? I used to knit. Now I crochet more. Me too, Joyce. I started my wooly adventures with knitting, which I still like a lot, but uh, crochet is just so much faster. And uh, I, I like being able to kind of go in three crazy dimensions. Uh, I like being able to, to do, I feel like I can do more quicker with a crochet hook <laughs> than I can with a knitting needle. Catherine, Kathy, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for picking up a pattern. 
Oh my gosh. So there we go. This is what it's looking like. That's row four of the booty. And um, already halfway through the booty, there's eight rows in total. So nice quick little build. Um, and it's a nice little something to, to kind of finish off a set with. If you make the blanket and you've got leftover yarn, chances are you've got enough to make a pair of booties. We should take this opportunity for a very quick public service announcement mm. um, about the website. Yes. So we, we found out that there are some adverts that come through Google that will kind of trick you into making you think you're getting one of our patterns but they send you to another website and then they're asking for information they want to i don't i'm not sure what it is but we just want to let you know that when it comes to our website so jadenstitches.com we never ever ask for any information so no there you all of our free patterns should just be a click away um, you basically find the pattern, click on the PDF, and it downloads. So if you end up in a spot on the internet that says, hey, you know, fill out this form and give us your name and give us your credit card, absolutely not. Do not do that. Yeah. <coughs> we would never, ever, ever we would ask, never for, ask that. for anything like no. that on our website. So we're in the middle of trying to sort it out with, um, with Google. But uh, we just want to let everyone know that the only place that you will be asked that would be if you set up an Etsy account, which is legit, or you set up a Google account um, for YouTube or Google Play, which is also legit. Yeah. Any anywhere else that's asking for that, it's it's uh, it's a scam or fraud. Yes. So protect your private information, everyone. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. and Stitches. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, okay, yes, Amy says, if you wanted them all to go in the same direction, did you do, did you do a row of single crochet in between? That's what we did here. So in the blanket version, um, you have a row of the cross back, row of single crochet, row of cross back, row of single crochet. Now, for the actual booty, the booty is based on a certain number of rows and a certain height. So that's why uh, we've A, gone with all cross back stitch and then only sort of bumpered it at the top and bottom with single crochet. Um, because we want it to be a certain height. Um, so that's why the uh, the booties work out a little bit differently, but that's okay because the booties are supposed to look kind of um, it's sort of extra extra fancy and vintage. Um, so that's why there's a bit of a difference between the booty and the blanket. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl's been a member for 16 months. Cheryl with a membership milestone says, could you make a baby beanie hat in this stitch too so that you would have a set? I love that idea. I'll have to give that some thought. Okay, so we're at the end of row four. We're going to chain one now and turn our work because now we're going to start working the upper part of the booty. So we're, we're done with the bottom part. Now we're going to work our way in so that we can kind of create a, a, a shorter version of this cross back stitch to make the upper part of the booty. So we've chained one, we've turned, and now we're going to slip stitch into the first nine stitches. So we're going to, uh, and that will bring us to about this space right here. So we're going to slip stitch into the first nine stitches. A chain one does not count as a stitch. So you chain one and you immediately slip stitch into that first stitch. We have a milestone from Lori. And also Katie would like to know how to turn on allow membership gifts. And I can't remember where you go. I think you have to go into the there membership should, th section. There will be in of your it, YouTube account. Also, if somebody gifts a membership in the live chat, right there in the live chat on that gifted membership, you will see turn on gift turn on allow gifts. It'll okay, be right there in that easy. thing. Yeah. In the live in the live chat. Yeah. 
Okay. And the way it works, um, we don't we don't have any control over who gets who wins the membership gift. It all is based on your activity um, on the channel, and I'm pretty sure it only happens during live streams. So I you have to be think so. You have to be subscribed, and you have to be in the live stream mm -hmm. um, for it to work for you. Lori, at, at least Lori, that's what it's like right now. That's what it's like right now. Yeah, they Lori, might change it. <laughs> it could. Lori's been a member for 35 months. Lori with a membership milestone says, I got started late. What was the chain count? Also, I love you guys. Uh, start with 39 chains and um, you single crochet in the second chain from the hook single. So the first row is just straight single crochet. Then you chain three in turn and you launch into the cross back stitch pattern. Um, but we've also got a tutorial for this, this pattern linked in the description box down below. So you can zip over there if you have to quickly just to kind of catch up. Um, and that's going to stay there. So if you need it for reference later, that'll be there for you. Uh, Nico, thank you. <laughs> Nico gifted another membership. And I just want to draw attention to just underneath that little green bar where Nico has very generously gifted another membership. It should say... If you don't already have it turned on, it'll say you could be a lucky recipient of a Jade and Stitches membership with access to exclusive perks. Allow gifts. It's in blue. Um, if you click on allow gifts, that will turn it on on your on your end for this channel. And thank you, Nico, <laughs> for allowing me to explain that. <laughs> and it looks like Fairy Queen has won it. Congratulations. Okay, we are in row five. We've slip stitched across the first nine stitches. That brings us to the end of this second little haystack. And now we're going to continue with the chain, uh, chain three, which counts as a double crochet. And we're going to start uh, with this pattern all over again. So you skip your first stitch and then you double crochet into each of the next three. And we are back to that little cross back stitch. And we are going to work a total of, um, we're going to leave these two undone and these two undone. So we're going to have uh, five across, five haystacks that we're working across the top of now in the middle of the booty because we're working the upper part of the booty. So same thing, cross back, double crochet into that first skip stitch. And you just sort of draw up that loop before you finish your double crochet. And that gives you your cross back stitch. And now we're just working these across these five haystacks in the middle of the booty, back and forth, back and forth. And we'll do that until we get to the end of row seven. So rows five, six, and seven. So three more rows of the cross back stitch and then one little row of finishing. So this, this, uh, this little pattern goes faster and faster as you progress through it because you start wide and then you narrow up. Let me just get through these five little haystacks and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Make sure I'm getting the right stitch there. Skip one, double crochet into the next three, cross back and double crochet into the skipped stitch. And then one more, oops. Cross back. And then after you've completed your fifth little cross back haystack across the middle part of the booty, you're going to double crochet into the very next stitch and that's just your post. So you're still finishing, beginning and finishing each row with a post. So chain three to begin, double crochet to end. And now for rows five, six, and seven, you're only working five of those little haystacks across. So for row six, we chain three, turn, and then again, you're skipping that stitch, which is directly on top of the double crochet from the previous row. It's these four across the haystack that you concern yourself with. Skip the first one, double crochet into the three, and then cross back and double crochet into the skipped stitch. Am 
I'm uh, so happy so many of you could make it today. I, Mr. and Sisters, I can hear him typing away. <laughs> we have a busy audience today. There, we have uh, 360 people watching Wonderful. today. Oh my gosh, thank you all so much for hanging out with us. I think uh, some of you have the day off today. Which I is... think some of our American friends have a holiday today. That's wonderful. Woohoo! Holidays! Gotta love a holiday. Any day that you can stay home in cold weather and do some crochet is a great day. <laughs> Did we get the membership milestone from Lori? Yes. Okay. Yes, thank you very much to Lori and everybody. I also like kind of the, the weight of these little booties. They, they feel substantial. They're not heavy. They just feel substantial. And I like that. Jada is currently making the baby booties, cross back stitch baby booties, which we have a tutorial for on YouTube to match the baby blanket we made using Lion Brand uh, Big Scoop or Ice Cream Scoop. Ice Cream ice Big cream scoop. scoop. Yeah. Um, I forget the name of the blanket. Do you remember what we yep, called it? Yep, it's that? the Crossback um, cross Stitch Baby Blanket. Uh, using Ice Cream Big Scoop by Lion okay. Brand. It, they'll be linked in the description below the video. Yep. They are indeed. Barbara! Barbara's been a member for five months. Barbara popping in with a membership milestone. Thank you, Barbara. That is the end of row six. So now I've got two rows of just five haystacks across, each anchored with a little post. So you can see this is this is the bottom. To explain, we're going to fold it in half. Now you can start to see that, that booty coming together. So now we're working the upper part of the booty. And this is the bottom part, the wider part that has the toe and the the, the sort of the sole. And now we're working on the upper part of the booty. And again, I'm making the newborn to size three month booty. And the pattern in our shop includes this sizing plus sizing for the preemie. And like I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to make it even larger for a larger footed baby, um, you can go with a size four medium weight yarn. We're using a DK or a size three lightweight yarn for the booties today. And you could upsize your hook to a five millimeter or a five and a half millimeter, depending on how much bigger you wanted to make it. We have a milestone from Crochet with Diane. Hi, Diane. <clears throat> Diane says, member for more 40 months, first of all. Thank you, Diane. Diane says, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? I can't stand the weight. I'm guessing you're talking about our calendar blanket. I think she's talking about the baby booties we're doing right now. <laughs> we can give that away. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably the booties. Here, I'll show you what we're doing. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> Just a nice little easy going hint there. Whoops. This is, um, <laughs> this is what I <laughs> Come on, everyone. It's only, what are we got? We four days, four more days, four <laughs> more sleeps. Four more till sleeps. The, till the calendar blanket launch. Calendar blanket launches on Friday. And then it will be every first Friday of the month uh, until the end of the year. So just like normal. <laughs> ah, we're getting some requests for a poll. Yeah, we should do a poll. Sure. Any ideas? Hmm. Does anyone have any good ideas? Something new we haven't done yet? Gee. I'm I'm fresh out of poll ideas. I have right to now. say I was so into this this little pattern. I um, I've got uh, I've got this year's calendar blanket on my mind. Yes, you do. Yes, you very do. Very full. Very full brain. Um, full schedule. <laughs> Krista says, "Quit being a tease." <laughs> this isn't teasing. All we right. call this honesty. We have another gifted membership. Oh my goodness, Nico! Whoa. Oh my gosh, Nico! Holy Nico cow! Gifted another twenty memberships. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Oh my gosh! I think we're gonna have to elevate Nico to saint status. <laughs> oh my goodness, Nico! Goodness Everyone gracious! Everyone, send Nico a giant thank you. That's like, what's that? Forty some odd new members today, thanks to Nico. Forty-two, I think. Thank you so much, Nico. Wow. Let's see here. Maeve, Joyce, 
uh, Carrie, Brenda, Jojo, Hell, Hell Kitty, um, Francesca, Jackie, Unique, Amazing Stripes, Sue, Bobby, Jane, Nancy, Pauline, Debbie, M, Betty, Colleen, Ms. Red, Catherine, Katerina, um, goodness gracious, all of you, congratulations and welcome. Thank you so much, Nico. And Crystal, <laughs> welcome to Silk Crystal. Thank you for joining. Holy cow. <clears throat> okay, um, I also see some good ideas Did for Did we also get an, another new member? Yeah, Crystal just joined. Oh my goodness, thank you, Crystal. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I do like that idea. Uh, I think it was, um, we've got, Who's, who, Bose Arrow said, have you made baby clothes? I like that idea for a poll. Um, I also like the idea of a, uh, a poll for um, what maybe what baby items you have made, like a blanket, booties, um, maybe a sweater or a, or a, a hat. Mr. and Stitches? Oh, are you talking to me? A, a I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep up with the chat. It is moving quick. It is zipping along um, here. We just got a... Uh, looks like a super chat from Rosie's Crochet Corner. Thank you, Rosie. Big thank you. Thank you so much. Holy smokes. Goodness gracious, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, for those of you who are still following along with me, I've just finished row seven. So that means we've got row one is all single crochet. Rows two, three, and four is the cross back stitch. In row five, we come in nine stitches. So we slip stitch in and then we continue with our cross back stitch for rows five, six, and seven. And now for row eight, we are gonna chain one and turn and just single crochet back across these 22 stitches here. And that will be the entire booty. We're gonna leave a long tail for sewing and then we're gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna stitch it up. Goodness gracious, thank you so much, Joanna. Oh, did I miss somebody earlier in the shop? I just remembered, you know what, give me a second. As soon as I finish this, I'm gonna pop into the shop and just make sure I haven't missed thanking anybody. Crystal, member for 31 months. Uh, sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> Did I tell you guys I'm getting my eyes checked? Thank you so much, Cheryl. Cheryl says, looking forward to another year of addicted crocheting and knitting. Oh, I agree. Oh my gosh, me too. And Suzanne. Suzanne's been a member for 21 months. Thank you, Suzanne. Suzanne says, I love this pattern. I can't wait to get one started after I finish my current 10 dozen works in progress. Ah, yes. You know you're a crochet addict when you walk into your little crafting nook and you see it just absolutely strewn with about a <laughs> billion different projects. Let's see. Someone had suggested a, a good poll. I'm looking for it here. I lost it in all that busyness. Gabby! Welcome to Alpaca, Gabby! Thank you for joining! I'm just going to zip over to the shop and make sure I haven't missed anybody. I want to make sure I say thank you. So, just to reiterate, thank you to Tammy, Annette, Karen, Debbie, Catherine, Kathy, Suzanne, and Joanna. Thank you all so much for picking up a pattern at our Etsy shop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay, okay so... Up. So, I have to... What, what did we got? We got, uh, while I was setting up the poll, we got a bunch of, um, a bunch of, a bunch of shop sales? No, 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 no. I just wanted to make sure we did get a shop sale. I just oh, wanted to okay. make sure that I didn't miss anybody. Some milestones, I think. Yep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're busy today, I'm mister. Trying to, I'm trying to set up a poll here. Um... All right, I've left a long tail and I'm going to be stitching up the booty with this long tail. So I'm gonna sort of thread it up. I probably have more than I need, but I always like to cut more than I think I need. Um, I could also take a moment to weave in the short tail, which I might do that first, just so it's out of my way. So the short tail, that's from the foundation row. I'm just gonna weave that in. If we missed anyone, let us know with the supers because the chat uh, moved pretty quickly there for a little while. We have a busy little live stream today. I guess we have a lot of people home. It's wonderful. I'm so yeah. happy that so many people could join us today. Either that or everyone's got their crojo is firing on all cylinders. Well, it is January. 
All right, and it's cold. What else are you gonna do? It's cold, what else are you gonna do? Make, make booties. So we're gonna fold that little booty in half and we're gonna thread up that long tail we left in our yarn needle and we are just going to whip stitch all the way down the front, across the top of the foot, down the toe and across the bottom. So nice and simple, you can just sort of hold it together with your fingers and all you're doing is making sure that you are getting the edge loops. So you wanna grab sort of the loops. You see what I'm doing there? I'm just grabbing a loop along the edge from both sides and a whip stitch always goes in the same direction. So I'm always gonna kind of grab from the side away from me grab a loop and then <clears throat> pick up a loop directly opposite it on the side closest to me. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around my booty. Hello, Francesca. Francesca says, member for one month. I think, I think Francesca just won a membership. Thank you, I love our corner of the world. I do too, I second that. I think we have the sweetest community on the internet Everybody is friendly and supportive and fun, and everyone has a good sense of humor. <laughs> <clears throat> we got some okay, great Okay, we have here. a poll going. 117 votes. Oh my gosh. Woohoo. So I'll let that run for five minutes or so. So if we have 363 people watching Jada Crochet Baby Booties today, I'd like to know how many lurkers we have in the room. <laughs> that are watching from around the corner. It's gotta be at least a hundred of them. Once you get to the top of the foot, you're looking at the top of some stitches. So this one is just easy. You're gonna line up those stitches and just sew all the way through the entire stitch. So you're gonna pair up all those stitches. Make sure your yarn doesn't wanna tangle up on you here. So you'll have an even number of stitches all the way across. So you just want to grab the pairs of stitches as you sew. Hi, Dawn. Dawn says, with a very generous super chat, Hi, new to your channel, working on one of your Afghan patterns, the Mandela Brick Stitch. Oh, I love that. And today, today, and included your video on our written blog today. I'm so happy I found your channel. Thank you so much, Dawn. We're very happy you found us too. Like I said, it's like the best community. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Katie has everything set up. She is ready to accept gifting memberships. <laughs> so this is, an, this is another public service announcement. Just letting everyone know Katie is ready. <laughs> and, and now the crickets. <laughs> and now, <laughs> me and Katie are having a little trolling, a trolling match. A here. trolling off yeah. here? All right, so I've now done across the top of the booty. So you see there's sort of come down the front and now across the top. Now I'm gonna go down the edge of the toe and around the bottom. So same thing with the edge of the toe. You wanna pair up those two edges and then you're just grabbing a loop on one side and a loop from the other side. And you wanna keep your stitches relatively close together. Don't pull them too tight. I love this, this pattern it is so, so old fashioned looking. And once you get to the bottom, you're looking at your foundation chains. So you just basically pinch the bottom shut and now you're just going to start stitching through pairs of foundation chains all the way back. So this just like sort of the top of the toe or the top of the foot is nice and easy. You're just looking for those pairs of foundation chains all the way along. Pull coming in. Renee with a gifted membership. Thank you, Renee. <laughs> Renee has gifted a membership and Ellen has won it. Congratulations, Ellen. 
and there is Mr. and Stitch's pole. Let me just get a stitch going here. Using this pattern, new hat, 61%, or new bonnet, 38%. 163 votes. It looks like the new hat has won it versus a bonnet. Mr. and Stitches, I'm curious, how do you see the difference between a hat and a bonnet? To be fair, I was um, I was using someone's suggest suggestion in the chat. Okay. So I guess a hat would be, I guess you could think of a hat like maybe a bit of a bucket hat for a baby. Yes. And then a bonnet has the little, what's the, like, you know what a bonnet looks like. It oh, I know little, what a bonnet looks like. I was interested in what... at the front of it. What so, you said. yeah, that would be my guess. All right. So a hat versus a bonnet in this stitch. I love the idea. What a great idea. I will definitely work at designing one. I'm having some technical issues here at the computer, so. Are you? Yeah, it's starting to slow down again. Barbara! Barbara with a $2 super sticker. Thank you, Barbara, with our little, uh, hey you, our happy little pear wiggling his little butt. Thank you so much, Barbara. <laughs> I'm almost stitched up here. All the chit chat and all the excitement today. It looks like I might just get one booty done. So I might end up working on the second one a little later. Because I did tell you I wanted to show you how to do uh, built in ties just so you could have little ties on this if you didn't want to use ribbon because the original pattern calls for ribbon, which I still think is really, really cute. Um, but if you don't want to use ribbon, then um, I'm going to show you how to work um, to make built-in ties so that you can just make this sort of slightly a snug fit uh, for a little foot if in case when they're kicking the thing doesn't want to come flying off and the built-in ties won't be pulled out so that's nice too. Um, once you've finished stitching it up you can pull the whole thing to the inside and I'm going to just poke my needle through to the inside And I'm going to turn it inside out so that I can just weave in the tail a little bit. Now, um, you can decide if you like, if you flip it inside out, you can decide which side you like better. Maybe you want sort of the, um, you like this side sort of showing out, or maybe you like the other side showing. It's entirely up to you. Um, I usually stitch these together with the right side facing out. But because you're using the whip stitch, you can really decide which side you like best after you've finished seaming it up. Um, so I'm just going to weave my tail in back and forth a few times so that I feel like it's not going to come undone. And then I'm going to turn it right side out again. And we're going to start with the little built in ties. Did we catch the gifted membership from Renee? Yes, I think so. Excellent. Did I? I don't know. If not, a big thank you to Renee. Yes, I did. Um, I got Renee, thank you, and Ellen won it. <laughs> okay, excellent. I'm struggling to keep up with the chat today. It's, it's a very busy little chat. It's busy, is it? Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm glad everybody's having fun. All that matters. That is all that matters. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna flip this back right side out now. Okay. Now, just like a regular booty, you can put it on and roll down the top if you want. Um, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Or you can leave it up and we can build in a little built-in tie. If you're gonna add ribbon, you're weaving the ribbon through these little spaces across the top that's created by that little skip stitch that we do. Um, for a built-in tie, it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna take my yarn. I'm gonna start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm gonna pick up my booty and around the back, so down here, you've got one full haystack that's directly across from the front seam. So if you kind of like squeeze your booty this way and you're looking at, here's the front of it. This is the little haystack in the back that's directly opposite that. So around the middle stitch, 
the bottom of that middle double crochet, just a stitch somewhere near the middle back of your booty on the inside, you're going to anchor your yarn. So anchor it with a slip knot, and then you're going to chain eh, 40 stitches. Nico would like to know, is the booty stretchy? Um, I would say it does have some stretch to it. A little bit of stretch? Yeah, depending on the yarn you use and how tight your tension is, it will be more or less stretchy. But I would say yes, it's got, it's got quite a lot of, of um, give to it. So it's not a tight fit, uh, which is another reason that I think ribbons or built-in ties is a good idea. Um, if you have tight tension, then you can make uh, you can add more chains to your little tied chain um, than I am. I'm just going to do 40. So that's 40 on one side. And I'm just going to fasten off there, pull that nice and tight, and I'm going to worry about these little ends Cheryl in a second. Cheryl would like to know, could you do this stitch in the round? Um, yes, yes, you could, which is probably how I'm going to try and do the baby hat. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to have to do a little experimenting with that first. But yes, yes, you can do this stitch in the round. Okay, good um, to know. I'm going to go back to the same place where I, I attached the first tie, but I'm going to flip it upside down so I can join my yarn in the other direction. Again, with a slip stitch, same place, same stitch, so that both of my little ties are anchored in the same place. And now I'm going to chain 40 again. <laughs> we have a milestone from Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Sarah's been a member for two months. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah says, I've been loving your videos for a few years now. I've just finished an MMAM blanket in black and neon colors. Oh, and ready for this year's blanket. That sounds awesome, Sarah. Black and neon. I love it. Okay, so there's 40 chains again. So I've got two ties now. I'm going to pull that nice and tight. I'm going to worry about these in a second. You can take your little uh, short ends that you've got left over from joining and just weave them both in underneath some of the stitches that are right there. So I'm just going to slip these in underneath these double crochet stitches. And I'm going to grab both of these tails and there we go. And if there's anything that needs to go back the other direction, I can do that a little later. We have but, a milestone <laughs> from Crochet Crazy. Hey, Crochet Crazy. Crochet Crazy has been a member for seven months. She says, love your live streams. Your live streams always make me so happy. I can't wait to see what the new cow blanket is going to be. So excited. Thank you. Yes, this Friday. We'll see you guys all this Friday. Thank you guys so much for being here today. All right, I've got two little ties now attached to the very back. They're kind of looped in around the back. And now I'm going to bring them through these little uh, spaces along the top. So they start in the back and then they come out through the top. And then I'm just going to weave each one in and out through those little gaps in between the, um, the little haystacks. There's only really like two or three spaces. So come out so that they both sort of come out the front like that. And I'm going to just trim these little ends so that they I've pulled them nice and tight so they don't want to undo. And now I can put this on baby and I can tie it up not too tight, obviously, but just snug enough so that when they're kicking, they're not going to toss their little booties out in the air. So there you go. You can just, now you've got a nice little tie at the front. This looks really old fashioned and you can use it like a little, um, just, a, just a way to keep it a little snugger on that chubby little ankle. <laughs> 
Um, especially too, because Nico asked if these have stretch, they do have stretch. And like I said, if you're depending on the yarn you're using, you might see that they have even more stretch. So there's a lot of give to this little shoe. And with wash and wear, it's gonna stretch out a little bit more. So these will fit baby for quite a while. And when you're pulling them on and off, the first part of a slipper to get bigger and bigger is always sort of the ankle area because it just give, has give and it gets bigger and bigger. So with those little built-in ties, you can always just cinch it back up so that it doesn't, doesn't want to slide off the foot. Um, so there you go. There are a couple of built-in ties. You can do that instead of ribbon uh, because these will not be pulled out. And you can still tie them into a nice little bow. And if you wanted to, you could use a different color. So for example, if you were uh, making them to match this striped version of the baby blanket and you made, say, the booties in mint, maybe you'd want to do the, um, the ties in birthday cake or vice versa. I think that would look really pretty. That would help tie it in. All right. So there we go. There is a little baby booty to match my match my blanket. I'm going to start the second one because coming. I got to have, oh, and Mr. Institute is another This is a pole. big one, 175 votes. Oh, don't forget to click the like button, everyone. It helps us out here on the channel. Yes. Um, I'm going to just quickly refill my coffee, everybody, and then um, I'm going to start booty idea. number two, and then we're going to take some questions while I'm working on booty number two. So give me one second. Oh, did you just finish the, the poll? Yeah, before you go. Okay. I'm sending the poll your way, Alrighty. and then you can get yourself a copy. Do you giggle when Jada says the word booty? Yes, 39%. A little, 32%. No, 28%. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> we have, we have very me. important polls going on out here. Okay. Oh, all right, I'm back, I'm back. Got a nice cup of coffee, got a blanket on my lap. Oh, warm and cozy. All right, if you're just joining us, hello, hello. I'm starting booty number two. I'm using a DK weight yarn. That's a size three lightweight and a four millimeter or G6 hook. This is for a newborn to three month size. Um, our tutorial for these booties linked in the description box down below. And pattern is available in our shop. It's a sneaky sale today. So if you want a pair um, to, for yourself and you want help support the show, please feel free to pick up the pattern. I appreciate it very much. All sizes start with a chain of 39. And uh, like we said, you can use the video, the tutorial down below um, if you want to catch up a little later on. Hi, Raven. Raven's been a member for 17 months. Raven says, love the videos. Can't wait to start the first cow whip. Woo! Friday, 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 everybody. I'm gonna keep 
track of how many chains I'm doing here. So 39 to begin. And if anybody's got questions about this particular stitch or the booties or the blanket, please fire away. We will try to get as many of them as we can here. Once you have 39 chains, skip the first chain and single crochet into the second chain and each remaining chain, you'll have 38 stitches at the end of row one. <clears throat> Hi, Rianne. Rianne is back. Welcome Never back, Rianne. And Ronnie, hey Ronnie. Ronnie's been a member for 25 months. Ronnie with a membership milestones is happy 2024. Enjoying the live stream of the year. Oh, well. Welcome back. Happy New Year, everybody. If you uh, are just kind of returning to crochet, welcome back to the woolly world. January is such a good time to sit down with your yarn and your hooks. Nico, thank you, Nico. <laughs> thank you so much, Nico. Nico, picking up a pattern at the Etsy shop. All right. So let me keep, see if I can do this and read the chat at the same time. Looking for questions. If you've got to take off, feel free. Thank you for spending some time with us. So all single crochet for the first row of our little pattern. These are only eight rows and most of that is the cross back stitch. <laughs> Melissa says, maybe bring your coffee into the craft room, or is that a recipe for disaster? I keep one mug of coffee with me in the craft room, but I would not bring the thermos in because that, that would be A, asking for a mess, and B, that would have Mr. and Stitches in here stealing my coffee all the time. So, <laughs> <clears throat> Crochet Diet with Diane says, am I still a member? Yes, Diane. <laughs> Diane, you are still a member and you are showing as a member and you are showing as a long standing member also based on the um, badge that you have. Tammy asks, can you use two ply yarn? Okay, if we're talking two ply in the Australian ply weight category, um, if the two ply, I can't remember offhand if two ply is equal to a three weight, anybody who's a little more proficient in that yarn weight conversion than I am, if, if a two ply is the same as a three weight, um, I, something tells me it might be a little light. That might be a little too light. Um, but, um, if you're talking about ply in the old fashioned sense, like how many, like how many threads are in the yarn, it depends on how thick the ply are, so. <laughs> Tammy, thank you. Um, size three DK weight yarn or double knit weight yarn is also known as sport weight or baby weight um, in addition to being lightweight. So I, I, think, I think the Australian two ply might be a little on the light side. Two ply is lightweight yarn. Two ply in UK terms is nearly lace weight, says Caroline. But Vima says two ply is lightweight. Okay, so if it's the Australian ply system, and I'm just saying Australian because I know a lot of the Australians use that ply system. I'm not sure exactly where the ply weight system comes from. Um, it sounds like Vima is suggesting that it that's lightweight. Uh, so yeah. Jada, does the blanket take one skein of Big Scoop or more? Krista, I used two and I had leftovers of the Big Scoop. Um, so I striped it with two. And if you were gonna use only one of them, then you could make the entire blanket with one Big Scoop. So not just the, not just the regular ice cream, the ice cream Big Scoop. So if you've got some of those in your stash, then yes, you can use one of them to make the, the blanket. Joanna, member for 24 months. Joanna says, does the blanket use one big scoop <laughs> skein? <laughs> yes, it does. Um, you can use one big scoop to make the blanket. Um, I used uh, the mint and the 
birthday cake and I had quite a bit left over of um, the mint. I think I may have used more of the birthday cake because I really loved that pink. But um, yes, you can get away with with one big scoop for the whole blanket. Uh, that's a lot of yarn in a big scoop. I really like those. Tori, Tori with a super chat. Thank you, Tori. Tori says, sorry, not related, but what is the difference between a three double double knit yarn and a size three crochet thread? Okay, uh, yarn weights and thread weights are kind of two different categories. So if it's yarn, a size three is basically this. It's a, it's a lightweight yarn. If it's a crochet thread, that's different. So right in your head, tell yourself that yarn and thread are two completely different things. Like you wouldn't sew together a dress with yarn, you would sew together a dress with thread. Um, so thread is literally that, it's different weights of thread. And a size three in the thread is um, not a super tiny thread. It's not like a sewing thread size, it's a little thicker. It's like, it's, what, it's what's considered the fashion weight in the crochet thread category. Um, but a three weight thread is still smaller than a size one lace weight yarn. <clears throat> so if you want to think of it like that. All right. <clears throat> so row two, all of the cross back stitch rows begin with a chain three and a turn. <laughs> Crystal, thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. Chain three turn, the chain three counts as a double crochet. So it's using this stitch right here that's sitting on top of, so ignore that one. You're looking at sets of four stitches all the way across. Skip the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So this one doesn't count because it's already in use. This stitch we skip, and then we start double crochet into the next stitch. And we double crochet into the next two. So you have three double crochets in a row. And when you look at it, <clears throat> you've got a skipped stitch right here. So you're going to double crochet back into that one. So you start a double crochet, reach back to that skip stitch, make sure you're getting all the way through it. Pick up a loop and make sure that you draw your hook up to the same height as your double crochets. And then you can finish the double crochet. And there's your cross back. So look for sets of four. Skip the first stitch of the set, double crochet into the next three, reach back, double crochet into the skip stitch. And like I say, we've got tutorials for this, so you can see it a little clearer, a little slower, you can pause. I'm gonna zip through this, because this is booty number two. And there is no left or right uh, to these booty patterns. That establishing row, number row two, what I'm doing right now is Kind of the trickiest one, but after this you can very clearly see the little haystacks that you're working on top of as you go through. All right, so any other questions? I'm just half looking at what I'm doing and I want to try and see what's going on in the chat too. Good morning, good morning everybody! Pauline managed to make the first one along with me. Awesome. Yeah, I know. You'd end up missing the chat, though. <laughs> I know. It's the same thing. I kind of want to... I'm trying to sort of see what you guys are all talking about, and I'm trying to crochet at the same time. <laughs> Eight ply is typically a DK weight, so I think a three weight, says Carrie. Oh, this is great. Thank you guys so much for helping out. We are a, uh, a global community, after all, so the more we can help each other out, the better. Katie's looking for a squirrel and a troll applique. <laughs> I definitely have to make a squirrel something. I can't believe I haven't done that yet. Have I ever done a rag or a crochet rug? Asked Little Lamb. Yes, um, I have made crochet two crochet rugs. We've actually got patterns for a round one and a half round on the channel. And I've done um, just a plain rectangular one too. Uh, I don't think we've got a tutorial for that specifically, um, but I have made one. 
Um, I haven't crocheted a, I haven't done a tutorial with rags yet, like with uh, strips of fabric. Although I do have kind of a, a plan to do something like that. So I'm just finishing off row two with my last, this is my ninth little haystack. Reach back. We have a super chat from Lynette. Big thank you to Lynette. Lynette, thank you so much. Lynette's in the house with a generous super chat. Thank you so much. The row ends with a double crochet in the last stitch. And you should have a chain three at the beginning, a double crochet at the end, and nine little haystacks in between. Chain three turn, and then you are repeating that cross back stitch all the way back. And now it's easy to see because you are stacking your haystacks directly on top of the haystack from the previous row. So you're looking at those four stitches Skip the first stitch, double crochet into the next three, and then reach back and double crochet into the skipped stitch. And that is a haystack. Yes, says Deanne, I got to agree with that. Not all uh, size fours are created equal. And that goes probably for every single yarn weight category. They just, just because something's in a yarn weight category, like a three or a four or a five or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the same as every other yarn in that weight category. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder if you can help Miss Jersey. Miss Jersey says, I hate having no idea what size of yarn you're all talking about. Here in Denmark, we don't have that kind of system of weight. Do you have any tips on how to convert? Um, there's a few ways to figure out um, a conversion. So I know that there are multiple different yarn weight categories employed around the world. So uh, we're in Canada, so we use the um, the American standard uh, weight category. Is this a knot or is this, what is this? I think it's just a fluff. Uh, so we use the American uh, standard weight category. Um, then there's the, <clears throat> I guess what I would call the, the UK weight category because being in Canada, we also find ourselves getting a lot of um, uh, British influence, uh, UK influence. So I'm comfortable using UK terminology and US terminology. And I know that say uh, a size three weight from the American standard is the same as a DK or a double knit weight, uh, which is the more standard uh, name for that weight category in the UK. Um, obviously there's an entire ply system of uh, a weight category system that that talks about ply but that's not so helpful here in the u in the us or the canada or the uk because um here ply refers to the number of little uh threads that are act that are actually what make up the yarn so i'm just going to unwind the end of this yarn and pull it apart and i'll show you so for example i am taking apart this three weight yarn and there are three ply running through it so traditionally, a three-ply yarn was also a three-weight yarn. But in the last, I don't know, 20 years or so, they've changed that because different ply can be different thicknesses. So you can sort of see there's three distinct threads that are all wound together to make this yarn. But you can tell that each of those ply is very fluffy. Like I can split each ply further. And so it's difficult to say just how many, like there, there aren't specific threads making up each of those ply. Um, but those are three distinct ply. If I unwind it, that's what comes apart. So there's three ply in this three weight category yarn. But I have yarns in say the four weight category that are five ply, two ply, uh, one ply if it's roving. Roving yarn is just one great big kind of fluff, <laughs> um, which is why it becomes very confusing. Uh, so, I guess, um, I don't know what weight category system you use in Denmark. Um, what, what are the weight categories in Denmark? Um, if you could share that in the chat, I'd be curious. Got a little fluff in my boot, but I'm just going to leave it. Penelope says hobby yarn is in Denmark. So I'm sure that if you maybe go to their website, they might have, um, a size info comparison chart. Oh yeah, I've heard that Hobby uses. Um, maybe that's they must. They must have some sort of comparison chart, mm -hmm. or at least somebody does on a blog somewhere. We have a comparison chart, but I think it's 
UK American and me. Maybe well, Australian? our 2024 calendar. I don't remember. So our crochet calendar, not the calendar blanket, but our crochet calendar, our 2024 calendar, um, does have a weight category conversion chart in it, but it only is U.S. standard, U.K. weight, and the and the ply system. So ah. um, if there's a, a fourth or an even even more different weight categories, I understood from Shell and I were talking about this. Shell said that Hobby had a unique weight category system. So I don't know if that's specific to a region or if hobby made that up themselves or i don't know uh much about that i also have never worked with any hobby yarns um so uh, i don't know really how they compare to like i don't know what they're I, I i haven't played with them enough to know what their weight categories might equate to um in the categories that we use but it would be lovely if there was just some sort of global agreed upon system <laughs> It's um, kind of, it, it kind of <laughs> suggests that the world, so much of the world is still catching up with the fact that the internet has made us all a single community. <laughs> like so, it's like that, that's, you know, it's fine if your weight category system is, you know, just used inside your country and your publications are only just ever circulated inside your country. But the second you go global, like the internet has made us all global, Everybody gets very confused very quickly because everyone is using their own regional crochet dialect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For example, there are I've come across no less than six references to the what I call the cinch circle. Um, I started, you know, once I got into the internet, I'd been crocheting for you know 15 years by that point, and now I'm seeing magic circle, magic. I'm like, what the heck is a magic circle? And I realize, oh, cinch circle or a sliding loop. But there's sliding loop, there's cinch loop, cinch circle, sliding circle. I've now seen Magic Circle. Um, I, I, I've got, I've, I've come across six different titles just for that one and little technique. And that's just the English version. Yeah. What about all the other languages? All the other languages, exactly. Um, this is from Charlie. Charlie says, wait, what? You have a calendar? <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. We've had a, we've had a crochet calendar in our Etsy shop for a few years now. Yep. Uh, last month's or last week's live stream, we uh, we actually walked through it. So if you want to see what it looks like, um, you can check out the live stream from last Monday. We have a crochet calendar. It's 24 pages, um, so you can print it out. It's January through December, and every month has a fun little activity or uh, useful little yarny bit of inspiration to go along with the month. There's some patterns, there's a graph. That is in our Etsy shop. I think it's even up top, actually. I am working on row four of the little crossback booty here. And once I finish row four, I'm going to narrow the boot. It's a boot time. Ha ha ha. It's a boot time we do boots. A boot. A boot. <laughs> Jada, you haven't said the word booty in a while. Booty? <laughs> you have to say booty at least once every five minutes. Is that part of the... Uh, that's the new rules. That's part of the, the new rules? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can get quicker and quicker with this little pattern the more you get comfortable with it. Um... So Miss Jersey says we actually more count count how many stitches by how many are in a, a ten by ten 
how many rows are in a 10 by 10 centimeter. So it's a completely different um, style of measurement, and that's why it's it's uh, it doesn't work. Well, that's someone that's needs to gauge sit checking. down. Someone needs to sit down with all of the. Um, let's say American style, UK style, and then sit down with all the yarn from Denmark. We actually and compare them and make a chart. <laughs> we actually more count have how many stitches by how many rows. So stitches by rows is gauge, Ms. Jersey. That's something we have on all of our, um, let me just show you here. So there's like the gauge. Um, this is, I've got a, this is a, a standard kind of, label here so this is all the label information on a typical ball of yarn here so there's the there's the weight category light size three then we've got the gauge information for knitting and crochet so this is where it says your gauge would be um this says 16 single crochet by 20 or 16 stitches by 20 rows and that tells me that it should be four inches by four inches or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters so that's a gauge and that's in addition to just the category of the weight that it's in. So if you're only sort of seeing, oh, well, the gauge is, you know, a 10, a 10 centimeter square would be 16 by 16 stitches by 20 rows. OK, so that's that's the gauge category. Um, maybe that's what you guys just just kind of refer to the gauge and not so much like the yarn weight. Um, I don't know. This is all I guess I guess all of these pieces of information are designed to kind of help those of us buying the yarn have a better idea of how it might fit into a pattern that either we want to create or a pattern we want to we want to do because we can't get the pattern yarn the yarn that's in the pattern. Um, so every label includes a gauge, which is just target, right? This gives you if you use an H8 or a five millimeter hook and you do that many stitches by that many rows, your gauge should be around 10 by 10 centimeters using that size weight yarn three, but this isn't necessarily, a lot of people think that's the hook size you have to use with the yarn. Nope, <laughs> that's just the yarn. That's just the hook you're, they suggest you use to get the gauge, to check your gauge. Um, and the gauge is just to give you an idea of the thickness or the weight, I guess, of the yarn. Um, so yeah, we have we have gauge on our, on our yarn too, but we more refer to the weight category than we would to the gauge. Um, which makes me wonder if the gauge was something maybe people maybe paid more attention to before they came up with the weight category and maybe that's why they came up with the weight categories. I don't know. I would like to know that. Um, just quickly, chain one turn at the end of row four of the pattern. So we've got three rows of the cross back stitch on top of the single crochet row that began. And now we're going to slip stitch into the first nine stitches because we're going to work our way across that post and two of the haystacks. so that we can start working on the upper part of the little slipper. So that's number nine. So I've slip stitched in nine stitches. Now I chain three to begin row five. And now I'm working that cross back stitch across these five middle haystacks. So same pattern, I'm just shortening how many haystacks I do. And I'm halfway through the booty. Can I get that information off Google? I would assume so. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, Nico. I'm not sure which, which information. I'm just, <laughs> I'm zipping in and the gauge is needed for making the pattern. Oh, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Stitches and rows is a four inch by four inch is what we call gauge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are, we're all on the same page here. Gauge, we all understand where to find the gauge information. Sorry guys, I'm just sort of catching up with the chat. Diane, do you guys think I say boots funny? How do you all say boots or boot? <laughs> I love the way you say boot. Boot or booty? Boot, boot. Is it the way I say my T's, boot? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is it's a boot, the boots. It's a boot, the baby booty boots. Yeah, so that's funny. I know we have this conversation every once in a while. We don't say a boot. 
here. We, we say, say about. 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 Like you have a bout of, of bad sickness or about. Yeah. A a, we say B O U T, not B O O T. So about, <laughs> a, about, as opposed to a boot. Like it's a some people on the British side. Yeah, some people out out west, I think, say a Minus boot. Minus the accent, of course. A boot, a boot. I think we learned that on the west coast, they they say a boot. Yeah, like for real. I thought that was a joke until yeah, I found out people joke, actually say that like but that. But it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a boot. A, yeah. But we say, Ontario, uh, we say about. We say about. Yeah. In Quebec, they say something completely different. <laughs> end with a single, end with a double crochet in the next stitch so that we're on row five. Row six and row seven are the same as row five. Chain three, turn, <laughs> and you're only working five little haystacks. Yes, I've heard some Americans say rough instead of roof. Yeah, that makes me laugh. I've heard that before, rough. A rough. Rough is the is the the roof. I've heard that one. Cuz we say, you know, if something is is scratchy, it's rough. Rough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're going to need a conversion chart for the way we all speak. I know. I, that's another thing I, I love about meeting people is, is, is how, how we all sound when we use like the same words and sometimes how words change, like the meaning changes for the use of the word. Uh, I love that. I am absolutely fascinated by that. And just zipping through booty number two here. I said I was going to make the whole pair during the live stream. So uh, took me a little longer to get through the first one than I thought. But that's because we've just had such a lovely busy chat with everybody being here today. I'm glad you could all make it. And I'm really happy that you've all had a chance to hang out with us. It's um, such a nice way to start off the week. I've got one more row of cross back stitch here and then I'm going to do a finishing row of single crochet and then I'm going to stitch up the booty. Hey Connie! Connie has a super chat. Thank you so much Connie. Connie says, Hi Jada and Mr. and Stitches. Just set joined as a new member. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you for joining. Says, currently making a mitered gr corner granny square for my newly arriving granddaughter. Oh my gosh, congratulations! Can make her make her make a new pair of booties for her too. <laughs> Use yeah. the same color that you, you're making the, the granny square blanket out of. Are you using our mitered granny square tutorial? Or are you going by memory? I love the mitered granny square. I love that look too. It's it so looks cool. so good. There we go. Three more to go. Okay, so what's Charlie saying here? Coyote is coyote, creek is crick, and stupid has three O's. Stupid. <laughs> Summer Summer says we pro we pronounce most of our words like they do, and they're from Indiana. Okay. Nico likes the way Jada says lilac. Lilac. How do you say lilac? Lilac. Lilac? Mm -hmm. Lilac? Lilac. lilac. <laughs> Jada is working on baby booties today. I'll pull up the picture. We have um, a recorded tutorial on them. Yeah. Step by step. And she is making them to match the blanket we did with Lion Brand ice cream scoop. Big scoop. Big scoop. Yes. Row eight, I'm just single crocheting in each stitch all the way back. There's 22 stitches at the end of row eight. And then I'm going to leave a long tail for stitching. I'm going to weave in my short tail and then I'm going to sew up the booty and add the two little built-in drawstrings so that I can complete my little pair. 
Uh, yes, Mr. and Stitches is correct. We have a tutorial for this and for the blanket. So if you need to uh, see a more concise version. Is there a version... flash sale in the Etsy shop right now? We, we're not having um, a store-wide flash sale, but we are having a sneaky sale. Yes. And Jada put up the baby booty pattern. Um, this one's on sale. The booty and the baby booty pattern and the matching blanket. And the matching blanket. Yep. So these two patterns are currently on sale. Um, and if you go to the shop and you go to categories, one of the categories is um, on sale. So whatever's on sale, whether it's one item or a hundred items, it, they'll all show in that area. And a big thank you to everyone who purchases a pattern. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. The landscape continues to change and uh, it helps us a lot when people pick up a pattern or join or become members. So we really appreciate the help. Thank you, Katie. Um, and uh, also for those of you who regularly share our videos, I, I can see sometimes that our, some of our videos get shared. Thank you so much. That really helps. Uh, thumbs up, leaving comments and sharing really helps a lot because it's it's we've been on YouTube for over 10 years now and it's stunning to me how many people still leave messages saying, oh my gosh, I never knew you were even here and I've been watching YouTube for years. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for sharing the videos. It really helps uh, because it doesn't always end up getting out there. Um, one of the biggest things that um, YouTube tries to do is give you geographically relevant uh, um, search results when you look for something, which of course makes all the sense. Obviously, like that should help you in terms of maybe where you might try to find something, somebody that's maybe in your own language. So geographical search results make a lot of sense. But when it's something kind of global, like being able to sit and do crochet patterns, um, you know, you're you're not necessarily going to see the, 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 the quirky couple from Canada. <laughs> if you're not from Canada yourself, we might be way, 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 way down the search results. So, um, so yeah, that's why we don't always show up. So thank you everybody who helps to put the word out there that we exist. Really appreciate it. We had a milestone from Crocus. Crocus! Hi Crocus! Crocus has been a member for 11 months. Thank you Crocus! Says, love this stitch and trying to make it with fat? Love the stitch and trying to make it with fat. Oh, like turn it into a, a hat? I love autocorrect. What did you mean by fat, Crocus? <laughs> I'm curious now. Well, we don't recommend eating the yarn. I don't, don't recommend. Don't do that. I don't recommend trying to crochet with lard. I think that would be. <laughs> it'd be a very smooth it, blanket. It would. <laughs> I don't think it'd it be, would. It'd be smooth crochet. I, I think the structural integrity sure. would be questionable, but. <laughs> Crocus says, sorry. Fat, fat yarn. yarn. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. Like fat yarn. We love our fat yarn around here. I love fat yarn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just stitching up my booty and then I'm going to add the little, um, the built-in ties and that will be booty number two all done. I love this this um, this big scoop ice cream big scoop yarn because it's it's very gentle sort of self striping colorway, and it's this you get a lot of the same color for a while so they don't they don't sort of it's not short stripes it's nice long stripes of color I really like that it's, it takes its time changing colors. Now I'm thinking that I should try and make a pair of adult slippers in this style. I'm going to have to change how they're they're built, but I would I would, I think those would be really cute. I mean like I like cute things on my feet. I don't feel like babies get to corner the market for cute clothing. <laughs>
Katie asks, could you use either cotton or acrylic for the crochet covered clothes hanger? Um, I Please recommend, let me know. I recommend cotton. Um, acrylic just, acrylic is stretchier than cotton. Cotton isn't typically stretchy or it, it doesn't stretch as much as acrylic can. And acrylic tends to pill. Um, cotton is a little less likely to pill. Um, so I recommend a yarn uh, that won't pill because a, a clothes hanger can become very busy. You're constantly kind of um, pulling things on and off of it. So there's a lot of like rubbing, a lot of friction, um, which is why I recommend a smooth yarn, like a cotton, mercerated cotton is even better. Uh, or I should say mercerized. For some reason I've been saying mercerated lately. I don't know why. Mercerized, mercerized cotton. Um, so, uh, that's, you know, it's basically something that's not going to pill. So that's why I recommend cotton for that. Membership renewal from Beans Bug. Hey, Beans! Thank you. Welcome back. So we're getting a lot of, um, interest in the adult version of the baby sip. Yeah, uh, I think that would be a lot of fun. Because Katie says babies can't be the only ones with cute stuff. Yes. I don't think babies should be. They, I mean, why should babies have a monopoly? They don't on get cute to corner things? the market. Darla's suggesting I put a Keurig in my craft room. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't mind zipping out to grab a cup of coffee. I like to kind of, kind of keep everything in the kitchen. Um, a, uh, I don't think I've got room for a, a kettle or a, I, I, I think if that, the, when I make room for something new on the, on the, um, on the, uh, uh, the, the, the craft room shelves, I think it's going to be for like a cricket machine. I think that's, that's the next, or, or a knitting <laughs> machine. Those are two of the, the next big things that I think I want to get, which I will be making room for before I, I make room for a, for like Leslie a little coffee says... maker. Sorry, Leslie says, I still cannot find the blanket pattern on Etsy. I have looked in the sale and under the baby pattern. It's right up top when you it land there. It should be right up top in yep. the featured area. It's a featured article. Right up top. So it's called the Crossback Baby Booties, I think. Yep. And the blanket. The booties and the blanket are the, there's four featured articles up top, or at least there should be. Um. Leslie, you might, re you when you need to um, clear your cash. Yeah, Maybe you're getting old. Uh, the um, an you can old also search the pages showing up. You can also search. Um, you can use the little search. There's either a, the little magnifying glass or just the bar that says search in it. Just type in the word cross, and everything with that word in the title will pop up in your face, and uh, that should find it in no time. We have a another gifted membership from Nico. Oh my gosh, Nico! Thank you. And the winner is Darla. Darla, <laughs> congratulations, Darla. PB says, "I will love a cricket." You have four? Oh my gosh! Wow. Um, I I would like to get a cricket. I would I would like a cricket. Um, but I also would like a, a knitting machine. There's a bunch of things I would like, so I'm. Trying to figure out what I'm saving up for first. I'm <laughs> putting in my built-in um, ties now. So I'm just anchoring my yarn with a slip stitch around the base of the middle back double crochet and on the inside of the booty. I'm gonna chain 40 and then I'm gonna repeat for a second one. That's 40. Just gonna fasten off, pull that nice and tight, and I'll trim that in a minute. And then I'm gonna repeat in the opposite direction. Mr. and Stitches has not gotten his new computer yet, Georgie. We, we're uh, working on the new office. We're still working we're on that. We're in the process of organizing and cleaning and painting yes and my plan is to get some new furniture 
and then the new computer. So the new computer is gonna be probably one of the last things I get. And our goal is to probably get that in the, in the spring. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. We're saving up for all of our stuff. I gotta crack the whip on Jada, make sure she paints the room and cleans <laughs> everything up all by herself. <laughs> <laughs> Let the trolling begin. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to pull up the Etsy shop to um show where to find the patterns, but it's not working. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it was working the other day. I don't understand. Oh well. It um we will, we will, it, it's, it should be right up top. So if you are, um, if you've been to the shop a few times, you might want to just clear your browser history. Um, I recommend clearing your browser history every couple of days just because it, um, Oh, it's sold out, Jada. It's sold out? You're not doing your job. <laughs> Here comes the pink slip. Let me just pop in and check on that. Gee whiz. Give Jada, give Jada a minute. She'll check on that. Maybe it did sell out. Oh boy. I beg your pardon. No! Yes, you're right, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. That's why it's not showing. It's our fault, Leslie. Thanks for letting us know. You better check on the blanket, too. I'm doing that. Um... Boy, I think I'm going to have to have a talking to the uh, manager, <laughs> the shop manager. We're going to have to have a board meeting here. Gee whiz. What is going on? <laughs> the whole okay. company's falling apart. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Okay, that should now it should be there now. I'm so sorry. That was that was my error. I uh, didn't realize that it would it had sold out. I don't get a notification. <laughs> All right. Back in Back in, back, back up and running here. Goodness gracious. All right. How can a digital pattern sell out, says Caroline. Well, um, Etsy has us actually select the number of, of, um, of versions or the number that we, you we can have. have. To put, we have to put them up in batches. It's just the way Etsy's set yep, up. So. Yep. Which, is, which is good because it helps it, you kind of keep track of keeps things. You making sure you're checking on the shop and not ignoring it yes we there don't ignore our little shop over here no only when we're live streaming apparently yeah only when we're live streaming <laughs> all right there we go so i've got built-in ties now for these little booties so this is the only little difference i made with the pattern today the original tutorial has us adding a ribbon which i think is really really cute um, but built-in ties is nice too. You can make them, if you're going to make a, a two-tone blanket like this one, you can make the ties to match. Um, and this way the ties are built in and they're not going to come out, so they can't be pulled out. And they're a little more old-fashioned looking. I like that. That has sort of an old-fashioned kind of feel to it. So there we go. There is my pair of booties to match my blanket. Oh, I like this. Thank you, Leslie. Yay! Leslie. I'm sorry, everybody. Thank you. Our fault. Our fault. We'll take the hit on that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Thank you all Don't so worry. much. We'll find out who's responsible for that. For, uh, yeah, th sorry about that. For slacking. I, we'll find out who it was. That is hilarious. Um, Probably the squirrels. You know what? I'm going to blame the squirrels. They did not get their peanuts yet this morning. So um, <laughs> just before we went live, I saw one sitting on the feeding deck, literally plotting. He had that look on his face. He was staring at the back of the house. So <laughs> um, just a reminder, the tutorials for both the booties and the blankets are in the description box down below. So if you uh, want to make either of them and you want a, a kind of a refresher look at it, We've got those available for you, and we'll leave those links. I will also create a um, community post a little later on with all the appropriate links so that you guys can kind of have that in another little cohesive, easy-to-find place. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I know it's been um, it's kind of a day off for a bunch of you, so thank you for spending it with us. And um, 
this is just a nice little way to kind of get your make ahead stash ready for the year as it unfolds. I know some of you are expecting new babies in the family. Some of you know people who are expecting new babies in their families. Um, I like to make baby booties from leftover yarn from other projects too, but I just feel like these are an easy thing. <laughs> Thank you, Linda Lee. Thank you so much. <laughs> you might have to, if you still can't see them, it's because your browser is reloading uh, the website from before, so you have to refresh everything. Um, you can either click the refresh button, you might have to close out and load the, back the, in again. The refresh button should be enough. You might have to enough. clear your cache or yeah. your history. Yeah. Um, There's a few things you might have to do. Um, if you if you make things for your make ahead stash, baby booties are a great thing because they always are a fun little extra you can tuck into a, a gift. They're a nice last minute thing. Like if you're going visiting and you know there's a new baby who's going to be there, it's a nice little sort of thing to bring with you. Thank you so much, Joanne. <laughs> um, so having having a pair of baby booties in the make ahead stash, that's something I always like to have there, a couple sets. And of course, if you make something um, substantial, like a baby blanket, typically you have some leftover yarn. So it's always nice to make a quick little set of booties to go with it. It just makes a nice little set. Um, Cause then if somebody's sort of playing with their baby blanket, you know, their little feet match. <laughs> um, I love the ideas to make a pair of adult sized or even kid sized booties with the same stitch. I love that. I'm gonna have to work on a design that doesn't have the seam along the bottom. Uh, the seam along the bottom isn't big, but um, with a baby, they don't stand on their little feet. So it's not a big deal for them to have a little seam across the bottom. But for the rest of us, um, the bottom of our feet, um, there's a lot of wear and tear down there because we're actually putting weight on it and sort of scuffing around. So we need that to be kind of a, a fairly strong part of the booty. So I'm gonna have to put my mind to creating a set um, for those of us who wander around uh, that will fit older children and adults. And I also like the idea of doing a baby hat to match in this stitch. So I'm gonna put my brain to work over the next couple of weeks and see what I come up with because I love that idea. Um, does anyone have any last minute questions about the booties or the blanket? Um, if you think of them later, feel free to leave them in the comments section, either here or on the original tutorials because um, I am back to reading uh, comments. We had our little break over the holiday and, and now we're back. So I'm trying to get to uh, YouTube comments at least once a week. Um, but I mean, I still have a couple seconds while I finish off my coffee here. My goodness, it has been quite a long, <laughs> quite a long live stream. Nicole says, totally off topic, but I love your bunny sweater so much and assumed you made it. Finally realized you bought it and I'm trying to get a sweater. You know what? I was thinking about making a big rabbit applique to just stitch onto an existing boring sweater. Cause who says, you know, quote unquote, ugly sweaters have to be reserved for Christmas. I love the idea of making big appliques for my existing sweaters to make them more fun. Um, so I was planning on doing a big bunny applique, which I think would look just as cute, like stitched to a blanket or something, but I wanna make one as big as the bunny, the bunny face on my bunny sweater, because that's like my favorite sweater. I love that thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for picking up the pattern. <laughs> uh, Regina, hit your refresh button. Um, so you should be able to see it now. Um, um, or like Mr. Insta just says, um, clear your browser history and then uh, log in and see if you can see it again. But you should just hitting the refresh button should, should be enough for that. Um, Yes, a baby cardigan. I agree, Leslie. A baby cardigan in the stitch would be really cute too. I think I could do that as well. Jade has got a busy few weeks ahead of her, obviously. Kathy says, enclosing a flower in a, into a granny, but the sides are curving. How do I fix? Enclosing a flower into a granny. Oh, is that like a specific granny square that you're doing? But the sizes, the sides around are curving. How do I fix? If your granny square, if your square, if the square edges of your granny square are curving, 
make sure you take a moment to find your four corners and mark your corners out with a stitch marker so that you're not accidentally skipping through a corner because that's the number one reason that a you you lose the squareness of a granny square one two make sure that you're not skipping stitches or missing stitches from your sides because if you don't have enough stitches in between your corners that will also make your sides curve so Find your corners, mark them out, and double check that you've got the right number of stitches per side for your granny. And that should, you know, uh, fix the non-squaring issue. <laughs> it says, only 10 left and in cards. Well, I know it's there. Um, hang on, everybody. Crochet with Diane would like to know, how do I clear my browser history? <laughs> <laughs> um... It depends on the software you're using, but most softwares have a settings area. And you need to go into settings. It usually looks like a little gear icon, like gears and a clock. And um, you need to look for something that says clear history and clear cache. Yep. I think it's spelt C-A-C-H-E. Yes. And those are the two things you want to clear if you're having major, major problems. Uh, but re reloading the page. Refreshing the page should work. Should work, yeah. It I can see work. I can see it sitting there. Um, so it is sitting there. But um, uh, okay. You know what, guys? I think we'll call it there. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and crocheting along. Or if you were just looking for some company, I hope we were able to provide that. Uh, links to the original tutorials are in the description box down below. Um, if you're having problems in the shop, just pop into the shop and message us there. and We can help you there too. Um, and yes, refresh. Always hit the refresh button. The first thing you should always do if you think a page isn't working right is to hit the refresh button on the page that's if you're on a computer if you're on a tablet or a, la a, um, a phone just pull down pull down on it and you'll see that little wheel 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 and that refreshes the page so you can yeah. just pull down on it um, and that should that should refresh <laughs> the page for you too um, or log out log back in again clear your browser history that stuff that's that's just like good basic um, do some yoga stretches YouTube hygiene, <laughs> or, or internet hygiene. and everything will be fixed up um, uh, you can message us at the shop, Regina, and we can help you a little bit. Uh, uh, we can help you after the, the live stream if you want. Um, I'm happy to do that. And, and that goes for anybody. If you've got questions about the shop, don't hesitate to message us there because we can help you out there too. Um, I know sometimes trying to explain it through, through a comment or through a live stream isn't always that helpful. Uh, this Friday, we are launching our 2024 calendar blanket. Um, we have some brief materials information on it from the Friday video. So if you're curious about what you might need, you can check out the Friday video. Um, and that was just this past Friday, so a couple days ago. And this Friday, we start the blanket. So you will see the theme. You will see what's up um, this Friday. Uh, don't panic if you think you, you, you don't know what yarn you think you're going to want. Uh, hi, Marty. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for picking up some patterns. Um, we don't take down our videos, so if uh, you know you see the video come out and you want to sort of ease into it over the weekend or over the next week or something to kind of get comfortable with it, uh, please do not ever feel that you've got to rush to keep up with our calendar blankets. We love the monthly installment so that nobody feels rushed, but we don't take our videos down. So if uh, if um, you if you think you might like it but you're not sure, don't worry. You know, you'll have plenty of time to uh, to catch up, so to speak, or just do it. We Like we said in the Friday video, we've got eight calendar blankets now, um, complete projects. And if you want to start any one of those at any time, they're all there and available for you. All the videos are up. They stay up. They're in playlists in order. So um, you can you can just sort of follow along the playlist if you e -books want. We have ebooks for them if you prefer the written, yep. uh, written patterns. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's there's... Lots and lots of options. We do we do love blankets here, but uh, yes, the the brand new calendar blanket crochet long begins this Friday. So we will see you guys on Friday, and we will be busy putting all the finishing touches on the Friday video this week. Mm -hmm. um, so have a wonderful week. On that note, everybody, take care, stay safe and crafty. And um, Mister and Stitches, have you anything you'd like to add? <laughs> no, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us today. It was very fun, very mm -hmm. busy busy chat. Thank you for all the support. 
Thank you um, for the, the gifted remember memberships. Remember to click the like button and do that on all of our videos that help you out. Yes. <clears throat> See and you uh, as Jada mentioned before, the sharing, if you have crafty friends and family, uh, share our videos. That helps a lot too. Um, well, that's it. I guess we... Uh, We'll see everyone on Friday for mm -hmm. the blanket launch. I'm excited. Are yeah, you excited? I'm excited. I'm very excited. Yes. And no more hints. No I've more given, hints. I've given you enough hints today. <laughs> That's it. You've gotten all the hints you're getting. All right, everybody. On that note, have a wonderful week. Uh, we will see you Friday for the launch of the 2024 blanket official launch uh, and the January installment. And... Um, Enjoy yourself until then. If you uh, want a, a sneak peek of the materials required, that's the Friday video. And uh, we, will, we will post a community post a little later today with all of this information re sort of consolidated. And um, we'll see you then. We'll see you Friday. So take care. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.